Well, I do. I have the, the lead vocalist for the main squeeze, Corey Fry, sitting here with me. What Live up, what up, Music what Christ. up? Corey, thanks for sitting so down with us. So great to have you. Yes, it's good to be back in Goshen, Indiana. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you here. So we're live at the Ignition Music Garage in downtown Goshen. We're at uh, 120 East Washington Street in downtown Goshen. Now, uh, Corey, you've been here a couple times before. You guys have performed here a few times. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's Ruben's hometown, our drummer. So he's born and raised Goshenite. And so we always look forward. We came up here for the very first time, I believe, in 2011 and played at the Brass Rail. And we've been coming back ever since. It was a Lotus after party at the Brass Rail. And we had such a good time. And Ruben was like, we got to get to got to get to Goshen and get it. So we love it. We always come back. We can't wait for his folks to cook us a nice Goshen meal, a nice Gingrich meal, nice. and just get back with the folks and, and throw down. It's one of our favorite stops on tour always. Get a, get a home-cooked meal. That sounds yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the best parts of the tour. <laughs> uh, so, uh, speaking of some of the older days, you mentioned 2011. You guys started back in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of you're kind of going back to where it all started in Bloomington, Indiana, pretty soon with a, a show at the uh, at the Bluebird Nightclub. Yeah. How does it feel to get back to the uh, the IU area? You know, Bloomington is where it grew. It's where it started. We have such a, a good history there. Um, we haven't been back in a, a few years and so to be releasing this new album um it felt appropriate to get down there so we're excited to have a, a rowdy bluebird squeeze it's been too long and hopefully we can get some folks from up here to even come down and, and get down ain't no squeeze like a like a b-town squeeze it just gets a little hot uh, you know it's it's hot it's fun you get the energy going you get excited you get pumped that's what we got yeah here too. yeah those hometown throwdowns you know <laughs> that's why goshen gets it gets gonna get sweaty in here in the in the in the record store tonight standing room only I'm standing sure room only yeah yeah I'm going to love that. I'm tickets be have been there. out for weeks. I got people calling me from other cities trying to get <laughs> tickets to Goshen. I don't even know how that works. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> great to hear. Uh, so I uh, want to talk a little bit about that new album. Uh, you know, the socials uh, kind of talked about you wrote this show, uh, this new album in your backyard. What was the reason? Yeah, for that? yeah. So obviously during the pandemic, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on. Um, our manager at the time was really getting into TikTok. Oh. And so he had come up with this idea of kind of like, hey, let's just try to film like five minute song ideas, not think too much about them. Just see if we like it. If we if, if it's good, it sticks good. If we don't, we move on. And so it, we began that process um, a couple of years ago, just in the back of the the uh, old squeeze house just meeting up trying to you know max would come up with a riff or you know we figure out whatever and we try to write these little tiktok songs and we started sharing them on tiktok and in the process of doing that it just kind of became a wow we really like these ideas like maybe we should you know take them and try to like flush them out and turn them into you know real songs and so we packed up the whole band all the equipment um our good friend Steven, who produced, our good friend Teddy Roxman, who produced, um, our whole management team, and we went up about two hours north of L.A. and rented a cabin for eight days and just cut the whole album together. It was cool. We hadn't done that in the in the same room and the same feeling since our very first album. Like, even with moving out to L.A., we did things a little bit differently. Um, so it was cool to just all be in the same place um, with, like, one like-mindedness and just taking advantage of the time. So um, it was... The album's called To Be Determined. It was kind of built out of, you know, this crazy time that we were in, and it was just trying to shine a little bit of optimism, which is the, the tour uh, theme, the search for optimism. Just put a little um, a little light in, the, in, a, in a world that was really dark at the time. So we're very proud of it. We're very proud of the songs. We're excited for people to be able to hear the music, and, and we're stoked that it's out. It's been, you know, we, we did it about, I feel like a year and a half ago we did this. So it's cool that it's now out and the world can hear it. Very, very happy about that. Uh, five different men, five different walks of life, different shades, religion, tastes, backgrounds, and opinions, same goal and vision. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Because it, it's a beautiful, beautiful tagline. It is, it's what we are. You know, it's it, it comes, yeah, we, you know, when we built this whole thing um, down in Bloomington, that's exactly where we are. Five different people, five different cities, you know, got Ruben from Goshen, Indiana. We got Max from New York City. Smiley's from Florida. Rob is from Cincinnati, although his family moved to Indianapolis. Like, we're, we literally are different, you know, like, I come from a single-parent household. We have, you know, Jewish, black, Christian, like, you know, Mennonite. Like, you mm -hmm. know, it, it really is, and the music is a reflection of that. When we first started, you know, doing stuff, uh, writing music together and learning each other's music, we were learning each other's favorite songs, right? So what came out of that was... You know, if, if my mom listened to a lot of R&B growing up in Motown, so those are the songs I wanted to do. Smiley's, uh, you know, family, Smiley left Grateful Dead. His parents liked to listen to that. Ruben liked metal. Like, so it was, it, it was really like learning each other's music, but also um, 
you know a little bit of each other too because you are a part of you know what you listen to and I, I i don't think anyone's ever been against any genre or anything like that but as a band we decided a long time ago that we didn't want to put parameters on what we what what it was going to be we just wanted to write and if we all liked it it was going to be good speaking of not putting parameters on what you want to do you know you guys have done a ton of original tunes and things like that absolutely and that's what you got a lot of on the new album uh but you also have a history of putting together some fantastic covers that absolutely take absolutely new directions to some classics and things like that mm -hmm. one of my own personal favorites uh uh, you know, have a cigar. Yes, yes. Uh, which was uh, just an excellent track. You know, you got a four-minute uninterrupted guitar solo in right. the middle of the song. And Absolutely. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Thank um, you. And it's just a fantastic track, and you you got over four million views on YouTube on that one. Yeah, and things yeah. like that. Max is a beast. He is a beast. He's, <laughs> He's got some excellent, uh, excellent content. Of course. Uh, so where did the and you cover a couple other Pink Floyd songs as well? Where yeah. did this love of Pink Floyd come from? I, I know you mentioned you know, you know like, walks we, of life. Yeah, we just it was I, I don't remember who brought Pink Floyd into the the fold of like bands that we should cover, but we we like I said we never put parameters on our covers. And when we started in Bloomington, we didn't have original songs, right? So we were learning music so that we could play for people and play for college parties and stuff like that. So we learned everything, you know. And over the course of these you know last ten years, from Zeppelin to Pink Floyd to yeah, you know, uh, Jay Z, Kanye, you know, like you know, <laughs> it's all over the place. Um, but if it's songs that we like and we think that people like them, then you know, we, we're not afraid to tackle them. I think our first big viral video was Michael Jackson. Um, was we, it Man in the Mirror? Man in the Mirror. Yes. And um, we started doing these. We had all these covers, and it was like, hey, YouTube gives us an outlet to like, you know, people with original music. It's like people don't know what they like until it's kind of force fed to them you know <laughs> so it was cool to kind of soften people up with you know a cover it's always nice to be like oh like i know that song and then you can kind of sneak in your own original at the same time so it was a point where the squeeze was 100 percent covers you know and from there it's kind of morphed over to like now we have all these covers that can change our shows depending on where we're at but we can now you know feed people our original music and the covers are like a treat um, and YouTube's been great for that. Um, our our, our uh, page has grown so much in that time. 257,000 subscribers. 7,000 followers um, on YouTube. And it's just become a, a cool place for us to like meet new fans. And um, we've had so many new fans come out to shows and tell us that, you know, I saw Have a Cigar during the pandemic. I showed it to everyone, you know, I know. And like, I love you guys and I follow you through YouTube and you got me through it. Through, through the pandemic. That's and amazing. that's like, that's cool. That's gotta be the best feeling. It's great, you know? Who knew what was gonna happen during that time? And uh, I'll tell you what, shout out to Ruben. Like, when we played our last show up in Steamboat, Colorado two years ago and found out that the world was shut down, like, like Ruben literally went into the garage and we started immediately working on, we knew we had this YouTube thing going, mm -hmm. and we immediately started working on, um, how can we start playing shows through YouTube for people? And Ruben put his head down and it was really important for him to make sure that it was gonna sound the way that it was, yeah. we wanted it to sound. And we did that first show and it really worked out really well. And from there we were like, you know what, we're gonna get through this and we'll figure it out. And to know that, you know, a lot of bands couldn't do that. A lot of bands weren't together. People live in different cities or whatever. The yeah. fact that we were all in LA and we were all willing to kind of just keep grinding, like it, the, seeing the fruits of that labor now, it's been like a joy like a real joy one more question for you you're live at the English music garage tonight doors open at 7 concert starts at 7 30 yes are we expecting to hear some new tracks uh, off the album absolutely the album? absolutely we've been right. anxious to play all this new music and I don't know if you guys knew this we also released an album during the pandemic mm -hmm. that's like a secret album called one two three four five and it's only available on Bandcamp. but that was a culmination of some of this some of the work that we had done uh, that we wanted to just get out so we got a lot of new songs in the repertoire I think we've added over 20 new originals just to the repertoire with uh, some of the YouTube covers that have been going going well and, and like we're gonna have some fun with it.